Now we consider scattering in a central force field. We have seen central field motion in Kepler problem. There we know the planet is moving uh, in the central field, force field produced by the sun. Here uh, in the scattering we have a central field motion. What we do is we consider a uniform beam of particles, electrons or alpha particles, all of uh, the particles having the same mass and energy incident upon a center of force. We consider a uniform beam of particles. It can be electrons, alpha particles, or any such uh, charged particles. All of them having the same mass and energy incident upon a center of force. Okay, and it is assumed that uh, the force falls off to zero for very large distances. So for very large distance, the force is um, zero. The incident beam, it is uh, characterized by intensity I, which is also called the flux density, which is the number of particles crossing unit area normal to the beam in unit time. Okay number of particles crossing unit area normal to the beam in unit uh, time. Okay, so uh, I is the flux density or the number of particles per unit area. Now these particles as they reach the center of force, the problem that we are going to consider is this. Here uh, this is the center of force. The beam of particles is coming in this direction. Okay, this is the um, center of force. And they are uh, scattered. Here we see this beam, these particles are scattered in this way, the particles, they, these particles will be scattered more. Okay, particles close to this, this will be scattered more. Here also particles scattered like this. Okay, so this is uh, what is uh, the scattering here. Now, um, as the particle approaches the center of force, we have seen the center of force, it will be either attracted or repelled. Okay, and Due to this attractive repulsive force, its orbit will deviate from the incident straight line trajectory. It will, be, it will deviate from the incident straight line trajectory. Okay, now after uh, passing the center of force, the force acting on the particle will, you know, that will decrease so that the orbit once again approaches a straight line. So before scattering, when it is coming from far away distance towards the center of force, it is straight line. And as it comes near the center of force, you know, due to the force of attraction or repulsion, we are considering repulsion here. Due to that, the path becomes curved. Okay. Then as the uh, incident particle uh, is far away from the center of force. Uh, once again the force diminishes, force becomes zero and it passes in a straight line. Okay. So in general, um, the direction, the final direction, okay, the final direction of motion is not same as the incident direction and the particle is said to be scattered. Okay. So, uh, in, in general, the final direction of motion is not the same as the incident direction and the particle is said to be um, scattered. 
So that is shown here. This is the incident direction and this is the scattered direction and it is clearly uh, different. Okay. So we now define a quantity uh, which is the cross-section for scattering. Cross-section for scattering which is uh, in the given direction sigma of omega. Omega is the solid angle. Omega is called solid angle. Sigma omega d omega. This is the number of particles scattered into solid angle d omega per unit time divided by incident intensity. Okay, so sigma omega d omega. This is the number of particles scattered into no, solid angle d omega per unit time divided by the incident intensity. Okay, so this is uh, the scattering cross section. This is also uh, sigma uh, omega. This is also designated as the differential scattering cross section. Okay. Here um, d omega is an element of solid angle in the direction of omega, small solid angle d omega. Okay, so sigma omega d omega, that is the number of uh, particles scattered into solid angle d omega per unit time. Okay, by the incident intensity. The, so, the solid angle, an element of solid angle d omega, this is given by 2 pi sin phi d phi. The solid angle actually it is defined as ds by r square. Okay, ds by r square. So here uh, you know, we know uh, ds, this is the center of uh, force. And we consider an area, a circular area like this. And uh, the small angle uh, d omega, solid angle, that is given by ds by r square, where ds is the area of this. Okay, ds is the area. So, um, d omega that is given by 2 pi r um, uh, sin phi r d phi. This is ds, 2 pi r. The radius, if this is r and if this is phi, the angle phi, which is actually the um, scattering angle, phi is the scattering angle. Um, and this is r, so this will be r sin phi. So its uh, uh, radius will be, or circumference will be 2 pi r sin phi. And this is r d phi, so into r d phi. 2 pi r sin phi into r d phi. So, uh, the, that is the area of that uh, ring and we divide it by r square so we get uh, 2 pi sin phi d phi and this is the uh, small solid angle the solid angle is something that you consider in three dimension okay the solid angle in the direction of omega uh, okay so d omega is given by 2 pi sin phi d phi phi is the angle between the scattered and the incident direction anyway, which is uh, the scattering angle this is the scattering angle okay now uh, we can express the angular momentum in terms of energy and, and we are expressing angular momentum in terms of energy and a quantity known as the impact parameter S. Okay, angular momentum. In terms of energy and a quantity known as impact parameter S. So what is impact parameter? It is the distance between the center of force and incident velocity. Center of force and incident velocity. 
okay so which is actually the perpendicular distance between the center of force and the incident velocity okay perpendicular distance so here mm uh, we know this is the incident uh, direction of the beam and this is the center of force so this is the perpendicular distance between the center of force and the incident um, direction so d omega uh, for any given so uh, the the if v0 is the incident speed of the particle if v0 is the incident speed of the particle then l equal to mv0 into s okay mv0 is the momentum and s is the perpendicular distance okay so um mv v0 s that is the angular momentum energy is given by half mv0 square so m square uh, v0 square if i take m so uh, m square v0 square that will be equal to m e m0 v0 that is equal to root 2 me so l the angular momentum that will be equal to yes this is the impact parameter into root 2 me okay also uh, it is assumed that uh, uh, the different values of s cannot lead to the same scattering angle so different impact parameters cannot have the same scattering angle okay it is assumed that the different uh, impact parameters cannot have the same scattering angle therefore uh, the number of particles scattered into a solid angle d omega uh, lying between phi and phi plus d phi solid angle d omega is lying between scattering angle phi and phi plus d phi that will be equal to the number of incident particles with impact parameters lying between s correspondingly s and s plus ds okay here we see we see this is this is s the impact parameter s this is the incident direction so all those particles having impact parameters in between s and s plus ds yes and s plus ds you know that will be scattered into this okay s and s plus ds that means this small thickness ds that will be scattered through this region and corresponding solid angle corresponding to the scattering angle d phi small scattering angle d phi okay or phi and phi plus d phi this is corresponding to this that is uh given by um the number of um, incident particles uh with impact parameter lying between s and s plus d so number of incident particles with the back parameter lying between s and s plus ds that is given by this 2 pi s ds into i i we know that is the intensity or the flux density number of particles crossing per unit area here uh, the area of this portion that is 2 pi s ds the area of this portion is 2 pi s ds okay so uh, the now uh, the number of particles passing through this this is given by 2 pi s ds into i and and these particles passing through that small area with the back parameter in between s and s plus ds that is given by 2 pi s ds that is equal to 
sigma omega d omega sigma omega d omega what is it sigma omega d omega that is the um, d omega into i incident intensity i sigma omega d omega into i what will be it number of particles scattered into a solid angle d omega per unit time okay so if you multiply sigma omega d omega with the incident intensity i so that is done here and this sigma omega d omega is given by sigma phi 2 pi sin phi d d phi because d omega we know we can write it as 2 pi sin phi d phi where phi is the scattering angle so we are writing sigma as a function of phi uh, because we are having phi here and um, the 2 pi get cancelled and we have sigma of phi okay the scattering cross section as a function of phi that is equal to s by sin phi s is the impact parameter ds by d phi here we have taken the mode less because s and phi vary in opposite direction as s increases in opposite direction means when s increases phi decreases okay as increases uh, as and then back parameter increases the scattering angle decreases scattering angle will be more for a particle of uh, low impact parameter back parameter small means the particle is coming close to the center of force so scattering will be more okay so uh, to uh, remove that negative sign or to avoid that negative sign we are using modulus of ds by d phi so this shows the dependence of differential cross section on the scattering angle phi sigma phi uh, on the um, scattering angle phi the differential cross section on the scattering angle phi 